Acedonio did in fifth year, and this is a video on first game played on a system and first game bought for a system. Now I don't actually have the actual game on me, I'll just put a photo screen photograph of the game in the video. Which is going to be the case for the first part of this second part of the year, the entire 2600 since, well, we've had this for a long time. And the first game I definitely remember playing for it was Combat, because, well, it came with it, you know, that tank game. I just thought it was kind of a bit boring, that one, so. But the first game I remember, well, I never bought it from technically, but my family had bought them, but the first games I definitely remember playing after that, that actually came home from a shop, was Pac Miss Pac-Man and Dig Dug. Actually really good parts of the game they are as well. Let's just go into the really the very first one. Right, the first game I ever played on the very first game console I've run, the Sega Mega Drive. And it was Altered Beast. Yeah, I can't find the Mega Drive copy, so this is the <laughs> Sega Mega Drive collection copy because it's got Altered Beast on it, so it will count for the time, for, for, for the time being. So yeah, Altered Beast, I'm sure most people have never played remembered that game. Right, so the first game I remember purchasing for it was Space Area 2. This is not my original copy of the game, that was lost a long time ago. Yep, Space Area 2. So most people know what Space Area 2 is. The sequel is like pretty much a launch title for the system and it was the sequel to Space Area. I always liked the arcade Space Area and this one's fun as well, so. Right. So, and the next system was the Super Nintendo. Now, we didn't have this for very long. My brother bought Super Nintendo, but didn't really use it very much. I definitely remember the game it came with, though, was Star Wing, or as you Americans call it, Star Fox. And they also had... We only had a very brief time, but I definitely remember playing my brother buying a few games for it, and one of them was Donkey Kong Country. And... Goof Troop of all things. Kind of a good game, actually. Right, so next, next up, it's going to be the Sega CD. And the first one is Soul Feast. A space shoot again. Most people seem to have heard of this one. After all, it came basically pumped back, bundled in with most of the system. Hello. Bundled in with most of the Mega CD units in Europe. So, if you've played a Mega CD, you've probably played this game. Yeah. So, it should be an obvious one. The first game ever bought from it. A little bit later, but that's obvious. It's Kyo, Kyo Flying Squadron. Yeah, look at the price. Three ninety seven, three pound ninety seven. Good luck finding a copy of this game for three pound ninety seven either. That's all I like say. Also, when you open this up, it's a weird thing. Like, what's this? What's this all about? Why has it got an extra like spine card in it? It's a different spine card than one else. What's that all about? Look. Weird. But yeah, this is a great game. It's pretty much the closest you've got on the Sega system to Parodius. Of course, it's stupidly expensive these days and there's no way you get it for that price. I'd pay for it back then. Great game, though. Alright, next is the 32X. Now, 32X is the most recent Sega system I've got, so I don't have that many games for it, but... Yep. It didn't cost me that because it came with a big bundle with the machine itself, but Virtua Fighter. So most people know what Virtua Fighter is. What's that weird for it to get PM to give me cardboard boxes? I thought it's kind of interesting this game has a, a rating of 3 plus. How many fighting games with a 3 plus rating? <laughs> Not many. So yeah, that was the first game I ever played on it because it came with it. Right, and the only game he actually bought for the entire system, and that was Space Area 32X, which is pretty much an arcade, well, almost arcade perfect part of Space Area. Of course, by the time this actually came out, the game was nine years old, so yeah, it wasn't the most popular game at the time. Great part, though, it's pretty much the only thing I ever play on the 32X. Right, so. Now on to light gun games, because I'm going to count these. Right, first one, and this is the last one I actually bought, technically, and that's, it's too big to even fit in the camera. <laughs> yeah, it's Lethal Enforcers, with the Enforcer gun. Amusingly enough, despite the fact this is a box for Lethal Enforcers, I don't actually have the bundle I got this with. Did it come with Lethal Enforcers? No, it came with 
Lethal Enforcers 2 Gunfighter, the sequel, instead. And all I can say about this game is kind of difficult, and everyone goes, You're not gonna shoot me, sir! You can't make that child out of bed! Yeah, <laughs> something like that. It's a better game on the arcade, pretty much, but it's not a bad part. It's still, that's the best justifier, it's the best light you can get for the system still. And that's, that is the truth, that one. Because they don't need stupid batteries like all the previous ones. Right, so. So, on to the PS1 and the first lighting game I ever got, which I could have find for this video, was Dyad Trilogy. So, you don't know, Dyad 2, you can play with a light gun, like Predator light gun specifically, I was using. Right, so, then, on to the more well known PS1 running 97, the GCOM 45 or GUNCOM 45, and that came with Time Crisis. Yeah, who knows this game? It's a classic, isn't it? Also got this lit. Also, hilariously funny German dubbing this game. Action! Reload! <laughs> yeah, you can put, put the German dub in this game and it's absolutely hilarious. Because they have voice in German, it sounds so over dramatic. And this is, yeah, another great game and definitely a better version of the Aki because there's a lot more content in the game. And the first game I actually bought for the PS1 light gun, and this is one that no one's going to hear of, and that's Rescue Shot. Now this one's incredibly obscure, and most people don't know about it, even though it's an Ambro design one. It's a bit different this one than the previous ones, because this is this one you play as a rabbit and you have to like shoot him like, to jump over platforms. It's like an auto scrolling game, you need to protect him from enemies by shooting him before they, before they hit him. And, protecting from bullets. It's actually quite, it's a pretty easy game but it's meant to be easy to the point but it's quite a kind of a fun game still. And that's what I can say about it. It's never released in the US though for some reason. Right so now it's the PS2 light gun games. And first we've got Vampire Knight. Yep, Vampire Night, which actually was developed by Wow. I think it was called Wow that actually made House of the Dead series. So this was actually made for Namco, not Sega. I know Sega's name's still on it, so I'm not actually sure. This just came bundled with the PS2 light gun, which I always thought was inferior to the PS1 version. Maybe that was just me, but the first light gun game I ever bought for the system. Time Crisis 2! Yeah, Time Crisis 2, this was a part that took quite a while coming out, didn't it? I mean, it's originally a PS1 game in the arcade, but they actually souped up the graphics for the PS2 version. And I did it as a content. Another good, great game by Namco. I almost done with the light one games now, right? First Xbox, the original Xbox one. Which is not very hard to do because there's only two games for the original Xbox that was like one supported. <laughs> this and Silent Scope. And it's House of the Dead 3. Put the dead full of lead and. Yeah, it doesn't look say anywhere in the box, does it? I think it does, never mind the box. Yeah, and this version, once you beat the game, you actually unlock the Dreamcast version of House of the Dead 2. With all the extra features, and you don't have to do it stupid unlock codes, unlock red blood, you can do it on that play on that version. Right, so the last one for the light guns, well, it's going to be the Wii. Now, the first game I ever played for the Wii, Wii for a light gun, was Link's Crossbow Training. But I could have fired it for this video, so hold on. Here it is, there's the first one. Vote for it. House of the Dead 2 and 3 Return. This is quite literally just a part of the Xbox House of the Dead game. It's literally the same game. Yeah. There's not much difference to this one. That's what I can say about it, to be honest. It's House of the Dead 3 and 2. Notice this one actually focuses more on 2 than it does 3 on the cover. Good, because that was a better game. Right, so what's next? 
Now, I can't show you a picture of the... Now, I'm going to do Connect next because it's like... We're doing weird add-on stuff, so... Also, the first Connect game I ever played was... Connect Adventures because... Well... It came with this game, didn't it? So... Yeah. If you've got a Connect, you've probably got this game. That's a fairly decent game for what it is as well. And by far the best game, actually, the first Kinect game I've purchased, the Gunstringer. This is actually the best, in my opinion, the best Kinect game ever made. I mean, it actually controls really well, it plays well, it's funny, it's really random. It's actually even got good DLC in this game, <laughs> believe it or not. And one of the DLCs plays like Point Blank, one plays more like a, a scrolling light gun game. This game's a lot of things, like a lightning game, a platform game, a comedy game. It's a very weird and random game. I mean, you bought it brand new, you got to download code for Fruit Ninja. You obviously will get that in better use, but... Not a very long game, but since it's a really short game, even, oh yeah, one of the free, they had free DLC, which was hilarious, called, what they called, the Wavy Tube Man Chronicles, and it literally was a parody of the Mad Dog McCree, that game, you know, like, actually ones that are really bad acting. <laughs> I mean, I mean a real proper parody, I don't mean just like two minute long one, I mean, it literally is about that 20 odd minutes in length, so it's like it's like a full length game. There's a free download and it's absolutely hilarious. Really, go play this game, you've got to connect, one of the best games on it. Right, so, this is going to be an odd one, but I'm going to count them because why not? Tag Electronic Games, and the first we've got is Toxic Crusaders. You know, based off that movie Toxic Adventure, well, which is not a kids movie all, but... It's a clean up Tom! If that's a hideous one, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, it's a Tiger Electronic game. No, it's not Tiger, it's a Sistema one. I the, first, the first real Tiger Electronic one I got was... Space Harrier 2. And if you look closely... Well, I don't understand, it says Sega 1986. Well, the game, Space Harrier 2 was made in 1988. How does that work? This one's actually... Well, obviously it's not as fast as the arcade one, but it does actually play light space every bit. Which is pretty decent for one of those. Right, now on to PS... Now we're on to actually going back on to PS1 games. First we've got... First game we ever played on the PS1. Now this is not my original copy because it wasn't a platinum hit version, it's hit version, but... Because my brother's copying myself, it was Rayman. I'm sure most people have played this. I like it's 65,000 colours now. <laughs> now. This game is actually really hard. <laughs> when I play a hard platform game, play this one. This one is really tough. <laughs> and that's not me being sarcastic there. And the first game I actually bought for the PS1 was Darkstalkers, the first one. By that time the sequel was out on the Saturn. Like Night Warriors, that had their extra characters. Plus, I never got released on a PS1. Nothing to skip to Dark Souls 3. That's one of the only last last few games I actually sold. Well, anyway, yeah, I sold that one, but that's not what big deal, is it? Because, what else? Yeah, I sold it. Because of the other ones. So, the first game I actually really bought, legit, was Parodius. Yeah, Parodius. And this is actually two games. This is the price of $15.99 from HMV. You have to look, look God, weird and kill a penguin. Now, this is actually Parodius, the arcade Parodius versions of Parodius Da and Gokyo Parodius, all of it's called Mr. Fantastic Journey. It's also released on the Saturn, this in, in Japan, it was called Parodius Deluxe Pack. There's a special level, I think, that you can see, the level you can find in it as well. Great part, no, I no, great part of the big pain to find even when it was new, so it'd be a public nightmare to find something like that these days. Right, so the first PS2 game I bought. Well, the first PS2 game we ever played, I don't actually own anymore. Because it came with the system, I think my brother bought it from Toys, which was done it with steering wheel, it ended up breaking by jumping Ripper down on the bed, which he never used anyway. <laughs> that was Smuggler's Run, like this racing game like thing from Rockstar, I thought it was kind of eh, to be honest. Well anyway, the first actual games I bought for the system that I remember buying was, well actually it was, a, it was a, I think it was a 2 for 25 offer. 
Not two for 30, I'm not sure. And one of them was Kingdom Hearts. I think this was a platinum version, so it were a while. And, yeah, Shadow Hearts. I actually played this game previously before I owned it, but... <laughs> you know what, I think actually this is, is the copy I actually played back then, actually, before I even owned the copy of it, but I'm not sure. Right. But yeah, Shadow Art. That's one of my favourite RPGs. We shall never get a sequel because... Well, the company just grab them at pachinko crap. <laughs> right. On to some more now. So now let's go into handhelds. So the very first Game Boy game I ever played was Super Mario Land 2. Six golden coins, you know, the very first game with Wario and I was it Wario. I always pronounce it Wario, I know some pronounce it Wario, I'm not sure if it's a real pronunciation, you know, whatever, I don't care. But yeah, great game. This actually came bundled with a machine because it was actually a huge game where I got. So I didn't have a box, so there it is. First actual game by game I actually bought though. It's in a place in Spain called Andorra. And it was this game. Oh, have you got the box for this one? In the case for it. That was the Blues Brothers. Yeah, by Titus. No, them people. Well known for making quite a lot of bad games. <laughs> like, especially later in the years when we made stuff like Superman 64. As you see, none of these boxes in English because I got it in Spain. So, there's a cartridge if anyone's interested. I thought you've got the cards as well. Right, now on to Game Boy Colour. The first one is Pokemon Pinball. I can count this one as an app. Which still I believe got the battery inside it, is it? Yes it has. Yes, the battery's perfectly fine as well, there's nothing damaged about it. Great pinball game. Technically has more content in the sequel as well because that only had 100 Pokemon and it's got 150 in it. Yeah, that's, and you need to buy it because it has a vibration pack in it because the game pack is. <laughs> and just whatever that. And the first only game by Colour Game Pokemon Puzzle League. Or oh, puzzle, puzzle Challenge. Oh, this game called Puzzle League. This one's great. It's based off Pokemon. It's a really good designed game. What else do you need to know about this one? Not much. Now I can't show this one but Neo Geo Pocket Colour. Now this is a system my brother bought when he was in Gibraltar and he bought it because I don't have it anymore. That's why I can't show it. But for some reason he decided to buy Pac-Man with it. Now you could say what's weird about that? Nothing. But well, Pac-Man of the Neo Geo Pocket Colour is literally a direct arcade port of the original Pac-Man with no extras. I don't know why he picked that game. Another game we could have picked was a game called Crush Roller. We picked this one because it had a weird controller add on for it, but all it was was literally a bit of plastic stuck over the control stick to make it more precise to play Pac Man. That was it. <laughs> yeah, you had to solve that years ago. Right, so Game Boy Advance. The first Game Boy Advance game I played, I don't have either anymore because it was for Brothers because he actually bought a Japanese one because all shops only import ones over here. And the one he bought was, what was it again? I can't remember its name. Super Mario, Super Mario Advance, the Japanese version. You know, one based on Super Mario Brothers 2. Oh, Super Mario Bros. USA, but in America, in Japan. That was the first Game Boy Advance game, but the first Game Boy game I actually bought myself was this. Castlevania. Yes, it's actually just called Castlevania in Europe, even though I know the rest of it's called Castlevania. Circle of the Moon in Europe, it's just called Castlevania in the box. Great game. Very dark and stupidly hard though. <laughs> it's definitely the hardest of the game by Castlevania. So that's, that's the thing I definitely can say about this one. Come on. Oops. Right, so first, the first DS game I played was the mini games in Super Mario Bros. 64. Because that wasn't the very first game I actually purchased for the system myself. First game I purchased for the system myself was Feel the Magic X Y X X. Now in Europe, this game is actually called Project Rub. 
because they didn't want to get mixed up. The Deal of Magic was a slogan Disney was using for their theme parks at the time, so they changed it to Project Rub. A very goofy game, this one. Pretty weird, to be honest. <laughs> and yeah, I know it's the first game I bought, but yeah, even though it's an, it's an American copy of the game, even though I've got in Gibraltar, so it wasn't even an American place to buy it. So. Next, bad first English game I bought. Mr. Driller Drill Spirits by Namco. That also Pat Picks. Okay, I couldn't find that one on the recording. Yeah, this was the final Mr. Proper final Mr. Drill. I'm not trying to crap 361. It didn't even work properly. Shame they actually downgraded this game quite a bit when they released it. They like nerfed the multiplayer on purpose for the outside of Japan, so you need multiple characters to play as everyone and do all levels. Yeah, in the Japanese version, you need one character up to five systems. Yeah, that's stupid of them, wasn't it? So it's a pretty good game. Nice nice game to start off the DS collection on. Right, Game Boy 3DS. First 3DS game was, well this one's an easy one. You probably can't tell because I'll have to open it up because I've flipped the cover around. <laughs> yep, Super Mario 3D Land, which came bundled with it. Yep, another great game. I love this back, back cover they've got hidden inside it with a classic Mario art. So that's CG stuff they always use. <laughs> yeah, great. Right, new games, well, I, I brought more with me, but the games I got at launch, before I had to launch, the first one I ever bought was Super Pokemon Rumble. Yeah, I'm sure most people know what this is. I mean, it has a sequel now, anyway, and that's technically a free to play game. So you can actually do anything, more, do anything in the game without spending any money if you're really patient. And I'm not that far from doing that. I've only got about two or three levels left to unlock and I can go anywhere in the game and never spent a penny on the game. <laughs> yep. That's a fun game. It's a little bit on the repetitive side and yeah, really you're better playing the sequel if you're going to play this one now. And it's free, so if you don't like it and don't want to spend any actual money on it and you've got a free version of it and you can just grind like crazy like I do. <laughs> That's all the games I got when I would that Dream Trigger 3D and like a Geometry Wars like clone thing and Shinobi. Right. So the very first now I'm to Sony handles, the first PSP game ever played. Guilty Gear Judgment. This cover's kind of a bit uh, This is an odd one this because it's actually a side scrolling beat em up. As you can see inside it also has Guilty Gear XX Reload included. Though it's actually missing the actual story mode that the console versions had, it's just the arcade mode. A bit disappointing that bit, but yeah, this one's good. Good fun. Yeah, that was the very first game I ever bought and played for the PS bought played for the PSP. This game I bought for it was a game called Endre Extra Extend. I, I couldn't find it, it's, it's a really odd game. Like, my people made resin. It's pretty weird, to say the least. Alright, the first game of playing the Vita, <laughs> this, will be a, this, will be a, this thing. I think I got this in a, in a, a Best Buy in a, when I was in Florida. Called Conception 2. It was never released in Europe on physical. It was a collection, I think it was like about $20 at the time. I never did beat the game. I kind of, I got kind of well bored with it. It's a, it's essentially just a, another game that wanted to be a complete rip off of Persona. <laughs> yeah, it's not my favourite game. Maybe I'll go back to it someday, but yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Maybe will I not? Right, so the first game I actually bought in English saw, which amusingly enough is an American copy, that's why it's got this sticker on it. It's clear enough for it to say a Peggy 18, even though the actual game in Europe only had a Peggy 16. That's Silent Hill Book of Memories. This is another weird one. This is another weird one, this. I mean, this is technically the last Silent Hill game ever made, which wasn't a part of an already existing one, which was actually finished as well. And it's a Diablo clone, it's not a horror game whatsoever. <laughs> It just has Silent Hill enemies in it, and you know, all the stuff that's not from Silent Hill sticks out like a sort of thumb. Because, yeah, they just copied most of the enemies from the older Silent Hill games. So, next is the first actual European beta game I actually bought was Hatsune Miku Project Diva F. 
second. Now, I actually got the first one at this on PS. First one is on DS. No, not DS. On, on PS3. Well, that's an American copy because, well, you can't get a European copy of it. Then that one didn't exist. <laughs> I actually have actually the first game on PSP as well, which I somehow found in the shop. I don't know how I found that, but that was the Korean copy of it. So yeah, I've actually got this game on the PSP versions of this series on the PSP Vita and PS3. We have yet to find the DS version though anyway, even though it was sold in Europe, which is annoying. Right, so the next one, and now I can't, I, I, there are just screenshots of this one, but it's Dreamcast because I don't have any on the first game I've ever been playing, and that was Sonic Adventure. And I remember being really struggling with the controls of it when it came out because it's the first time I've played anything with analog sticks. And I literally did die in the first box, which is the first scene of the game because I didn't know how to control it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the first actual Dreamcast game I bought was Charge and Blast, which was. Well, it was. Strangely enough, an arcade game that Sega didn't think was good enough for arcade, so instead they just threw it on the Dreamcast. <laughs> but they didn't alter anything about the difficulty, so it's, it's so difficult and hard. I don't know if it's a valuable game now, but it's a pretty weird game on the system's life, and I'm not people going to talk about it. Then there was the Amiga, and the game I used to play the most on that, most played the most on that was... Uh, Moonstone, A Hard Day's Night, which is kind of almost in some ways like a predecessor to Dark Souls. When you play as a knight, you fight monsters, and it's actually a ridiculously gory game <laughs> for the time. That's what it was made before age ratings existed. And it, it's more fun to play in like, multiplayer where you can just like troll everyone and murder people. Great fun. Uh, second Samurai, which is a just a platform action game, good fun, and the, the one of the, the two games that actually bought for the system when it didn't well, didn't come with it was an arcade game which I can't even show an actual picture of because I don't even know I can't find one online. But it had a picture of like a robotic like angry pack with metal fangs, but it flips over to the other side. It had the same picture like a nursery rhyme version, a robot instead of having guns looking at ice cream. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a collection of arcade games like public domain named. It was, it was only on a single disc. It was an alright game. And then a platform game. Actually it was planned to release on the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo called Pinky. But it never came out on either of them. It was alright. And then the games I actually bought from the machine. Alright so on to GameCube games. Right. Smash Brothers Me Melee. I don't think anyone needs to know any introductions of what this game is. It's Smash Brothers. So everyone in the world knows of that game. Game, don't they? Right, the first Wii game you ever played. Not Wii Sports, but Wii Play. Because it had, like, shooting segments in it. And the more interesting that than sports games. Yep, there it is. Wii Play. Not much else to say. You know, the box like, art's pretty rubbish on this, isn't it? You didn't really put much effort in. But yeah, yeah at the end, this is a game most people bought just for an extra controller anyway, didn't they? So... <laughs> Not be a surprise. Now the first actual Wii game I actually purchased was no, you can only get this on the Wii in Europe, and that's the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. And this game's actually surprisingly good. I mean, you think well, it's a, moon, a game based off a kids' show. I mean, ridiculous age rating. I mean, PG thirteen rating for this. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what they were doing when they rated this thing. But yeah, this game literally. It might not be told the screen, it's Power Stone. If you ever wanted to play Power Stone, this is literally Power Stone 3. It's not called Power Stone 3, but it plays just like it. it's got more modes than Power Stone 3. It's also got a lot more effort in than lots of other movie time games and show them because all the voice actors from the show are in this. All all well, things all, all things in the show in, in the show are actually referenced in the game. Nothing in this game is just made up for the game, it's all in the show. So if you're a fan of the show, it's even better that way. Yeah, yep, it is. Alright, so now we're on to Xbox, original Xbox. The first Xbox game I ever met playing, I think, was Dead or Alive 3 in a demo unit, so not on that counts. And another game I ended up playing a demo unit because not all of them had Halo on them, was, which I ended up purchasing, was Fusion Frenzy. And yeah, this is not an, this is a foreign box, box one, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the game's in English. 
Now this game is like a mini game collection thing, be like Mario Pie. Actually good fun. The thing that makes me confused about it is this game is considerably better than the sequel on the 360. It was made by Hudson Soft. It's had a lot of problems. Right, so the, the first actual humor bot used for it. Pounds of drinking with water. Yeah. Uh, my copy of no instruction book, but only four books. <laughs> Probably a fairly good price for it, that then. Yep, great game. Well, definitely one of the game, one of the better looking games. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. This one version does not work on the original on the 360. I mean, if you have the US or U US or Japanese copy, yeah, you can put them in the 360 work. But for some reason, the European one it locks up after the third level and you can't get any further. Don't know why. Stupid but true. Right. Stupid but true. And the first one of that one of the games I always wanted for yeah, Marvel's is Capcom 2. Yeah. In a slightly damaged case. It actually came like that. I could replace the case though, I mean. Replace the case, that's not a big deal. Yeah, love Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Still one of my favourite fighting games. <laughs> Strangest game even back then were only 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 twelve pounds because the game was actually super expensive on the PS2 at the time. Nah, it was the only way to actually play the game at the time because there wasn't no 360 version. No, it's still the only way to play the game because well, you can't buy it anymore if anyone on disc because of Disney. Right, thank you, Disney. Right, so the first Xbox game, a 360 game, I played. Now I don't have this one on me, so <laughs> and that but it was Dead or Alive 4. Also in a demo machine, <laughs> like the previous one. Right, so the first actual game I played was Wartex Senko no Ron, the space shooter game. Yeah, the, the funny thing is, I remember when I bought it, the actual bought it. I went into the shop and then they knocked the price down. And I went back in the shop later on <laughs> for it. And the first game I actually bought for it, Marvel. My life. It was quite expensive this one at the time for a used game. Great game, though. Still think it's better than the sequel. You like RPGs and action ones, you should play this one. Oh, it's a really good Marvel game. Lots of characters in this one you can play as well, which is great. I recommend this game for anyone if anyone's into comic book games. Or in action RPG ones on general. Right! So that's what that's one of them. Right, so now for the PS3, I can't show the footage of the very first game. I didn't have a screenshot pic box picture of the first game I ever played for it because it was the free-to-play game Tekken Revolution on PS3. <laughs> but yes, the first two yeah, PS3 games I actually bought was uh, Dynasty Warriors Gundam Reborn. This is actually the fourth game in the series. And unlike all the previous three, which was PS3 360, this one's PS3 only. Yeah. Fun game. There's got some questionable design ideas, well, I mean, the last game is Shell Shaded artwork, but then they went back to the one two had. I don't know why I did that, but they did, so... Yeah, weird. <laughs> don't know why. They did. Another game I bought around the same time was Dragon's Dragon's Crown. I mean, I just saw this and had to buy it. I mean, look, it's a beat em up game. It's one of my favourite genres, and it's still only a... It's not like stickers on the back when I got it brand new, but... Yeah, it was actually kind of a pain to find this game. I was looking all over for it when it, when it even though it was fairly recent released in Europe at the time, I couldn't find it anywhere. Quite a few more while. Yep, yeah, that was it. And that was that entire video of, of, of the first game I bought for a play for a system, the first game I purchased for a system. Yeah, it was a pretty long video and hopefully some people managed to actually get through this. Well, anyway, thank you for watching and listening to me rabble hod <laughs>